Okay, in this screencast I want to show how to solve a quadratic equation by completing the square. We've seen that some equations are not solvable by factoring. Here's one of them. So you've got x squared plus 2x equals 5. If you move the 5 over, you're going to have x squared plus 2x minus 5 and then equal 0. That does not factor because there's no factors of negative 5 that add up to 2. So we're stuck there. We've got to have a different method. We've talked about this in class that completing the square is the method and we multiplied out this expression x squared plus dx d over 2 pardon me, squared and derived this identity. Now what this says in words is this. If you cover this up for the, sec for the time being, if you have an x squared term plus dx plus a number in front of x, if you take half of that coefficient of x square it, add it into your expression, then those three terms can then be factored as one large expression to the second power. So that brings the x squared and the x terms together. Now let's look at an example of solving an equation by completing the square. Okay. So again, I'm just going to write out the main identity once again. Remember what this is going to say is if you have a leading coefficient of x squared being 1, if you take half the coefficient of x, divide it by 2, square it, add it in, and that's going to give you a perfect square expression. One large expression weighs to the second power. So notice this brings the x squared and the x terms together. That's going to allow us to eventually apply the square root property. So for in this example, our number in front of x, our co coefficient of x is negative 8. We're going to take that coefficient, divide it by 2, Right, and that's going to give us negative 4. So that's the number. We're going to take this number, square it, add it to each side of our equation. Okay. Now, when you do that, I'm not going to actually square it out. We all know negative 4 squared is 16. But just to apply our main identity up here, it's going to be easier for us to leave it alone and just leave it in parentheses for the time being. So x squared minus 8x plus negative 4 squared. Adding it to their side, we get equals 3 plus negative 4 squared. Now we're going to simplify. So on the right-hand side, we're going to end up with just 19. On the left-hand side, these three terms are going to come together. This applies our main identity up at the top as x plus, and wh whatever we added in squared comes in the parentheses, and then we put the square on the outside, equals 3 plus 16. Now, Adding a negative is the same thing as subtraction, so this is equal to x minus 4 quantity squared equals 19. From this point, we notice the form of our equation. It says we've got one expression squared equals a number. That implies, using the square root property, that whatever's being squared must be either the positive or the negative square root of the number on the other side. So we conclude over here that this quantity, which we're squaring, must equal plus or minus the square root of 19. It's got to be one of the two numbers. So putting that, or adding the 4 over, that gives us our two solutions to this quadratic equation, 4 plus or minus the square root of 19. Okay, now we can look at that as two separate solutions. So one of the solutions is 4 plus the square root of 19. The other one is 4 minus the square root of 19. If we want to approximate that, we can use a calculator to get it to say four decimal places. And the positive solution in this case, or the largest solution is 8.3589. And the other solution comes out negative, it's negative 0.3589. So again, that's how to solve by completing the square. The main thing is you need to have the coefficient of x squared being 1. To use this key identity, in this case it was, we didn't have to divide by the coefficient of x squared to make it 1, and then we use our identity. Eventually we, result, we solve the equation by using the square root property. Just don't forget the plus and minus sign.